Um, I actually just started also working part time for C Prime as well. Since you know, I have some, yeah, so I just uh, did that. And uh, so if anybody is interested in having a part time job, let me know. There's actually they're, they're hiring. Sounds good. I'll call on some of my team teammates. Uh, how about how about you, Josh? Hey, I'm Josh Kachelik. If you're wondering, that's how it's that's really this way. That's how it's spelled. Um, or pronounced. Yeah, I, I work with Abe. I'm over Modus Create. I'm an Alaskan expert, um, and uh, I've been working in Alaskan tools for about five or six years. And when I I met Alaskan, I kind of moved all of my all of my life into Alaskan now. So I work. Jira, Trello, Confluence, personally, professionally, and eat, breathe, and sleep workflows. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to be here and learn some stuff from Abe today. It's like can fulfill that for you, Josh. <laughs> All right, Tanya, maybe you could go. Sure, I'm Tanya Grinsel. I'm a principal project manager and part of the Atlassian expert team here at Modus Create. Um, just excited to hear a little more technical presentation. I'm usually more on the licensing and implementation side in terms of how users use Atlassian products, not so much on the migration technical side. So that's what I'm here to learn. All right, great. Um, Cindy, I'll call on you. Hey, everybody. I'm Cindy Bunty, also with Modus Create. I'm an Atlassian expert. Um, and I'm more on the front end workflow, not so technical side. Um, so uh, I'm here to absorb as much technical knowledge as I possibly can from my teammate, Abe. <laughs> Great to be here. Thanks, Cindy. Uh, how about uh, Catherine? I don't know if you go by Catherine, but. Yes, I do go by Catherine. Okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Uh, my name is Catherine, and I work at Release Team. We are partners with Atlassian. Um, I'm new to the company and new to the space, so definitely trying to absorb as much information as I can and try and keep up with the technical aspect of things. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Catherine. Um, Tom? Oh, you're uh, muted, looks like, or something. We can we can move past and come back to you if you need to second. Okay, all right. <laughs> How about you, Chris? You're also muted. <laughs> Everyone knows me. Sorry, I don't. Know. <laughs> I usually never like have an issue with muting, but I swear this week I've just messed it up like three times. Uh, Chris Nicosia, director of Lassian Practice here at Modus Create. I uh, have all these awesome people as part of my team who you've heard from already, and I'm really excited to uh, you know, have Abe come here and present. So I'm really excited for um, Billy to provide uh, this opportunity for us. Yeah, awesome. Thanks. Uh, Harry? You are also muted. Oh, sorry. sorry. I was no, muted. no, that's okay. <laughs> it's easy to do. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah so I worked for uh, Adaptivist. Uh, so actually, I was working in Kutu Group, but last year our company was uh, acquired by Adaptivist. So now I'm working for Adaptivist. I have been a developer for several years in trend. Tran I mean, uh, transferred as a, a consultant. So I have. Uh, all the Atalasin certificates and also the AWS certificates. So I'm very um, excited to be Atalasin community and also, you know, the cloud community. Yeah, that's me. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, Tom, it looks like you got your stuff figured out. I'll call on you again. Nope. Can't hear you. Dang. It looked like it. <laughs> All right. How about uh, uh, L? Is it L or Ellie? Sorry. Oh, hi. Oh, thanks. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. I get that a lot. Uh, I'm a program manager. I've been doing this line of work for about eight years, and it sits between both technical as well as the non-technical, um, and I work at PBS. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Um, and then Vlad, did, I, did, we, did you go already? Yeah, Sorry. I got the first Sorry. one. Sorry, sorry. Dipanchu, sorry. <laughs> Dipanchu Nadan in this site. I have been working as Atlassian consultant at Modus Create. 
and i handle a couple of uh, east chapters in india and i'm also an online atlas and community leader awesome also i'm one of my teammates so um is that everybody except for tom sorry tom <laughs> All right, so that sounds good. Um, I'll get started on our, our uh, um, presentation here. So um, I will share my screen. Let's see, just give me a second. All right, everybody see my screen? Yes. All right, and you're seeing the, the uh, presentation, right? Just wanna yeah. make sure it's the right screen. All right, great. All right, so. We are here to discuss uh, how to avoid the Jira cloud migration pitfalls, dangers, and risks. Um, it's a kind of a funny title, but uh, it, it was uh, meant to be a little bit playful because obviously there's not really big dangers or pitfalls uh, doing technology uh, migration, but um, it was a little fun, so we went with it. Um, so it's basically how to assess a Jira server instance for cloud migration into Jira cloud. <clears throat> so who am I? Uh, it's a great question. Um, I am a, uh, my professional <clears throat> life, I'm, um, I have 16 years in the IT industry. Um, I started out as a software engineer, became a business and requirements analyst, uh, did that for a few years, went on to scrum mastering, project management, um, uh, solution architecture, um, and then now with Modus, I am a, a senior Atlassian expert. I first experienced uh, Atlassian about five years ago and I haven't looked back. Um, so I'm Atlassian certified in um, ACP 600, which is the JIRA uh, project administration and um, ACP 100, which is the JIRA server administrator. So as far as family, I have four kids. Luckily you won't hear any of them because my wife took them. Um, <clears throat> age eight to 15. And then uh, again, I have one wife, um, only I'll, I'll withhold age on that. And then several animals, uh, one chinchilla, bearded dragon, goldfish, hermit crab, two German shepherds, four bunnies. There's probably a couple other things in there that I am not aware of, but um, yeah, we have a lot of animals in our, in our home. Uh, as far as hobbies, I, I really do love technology. <clears throat> especially working out ways to improve like my life, whether it's my professional life or my personal life, uh, specifically with automations and technology. Those things are just really interesting to me. Um, oops, looks like some people are coming in. <clears throat> and um, I am a home renovationist, so I attempt many things and I finish some of them. So uh, generally <laughs> uh, try to finish most, but you know, not always. Uh, and then I'm a, a print, 3D printing enthusiast. I, I love creating things and, and making things, um, very often things that don't make any sense or have any real value in the world, but it's still fun for me. Yeah. Chris can attest to hearing, <laughs> hearing me print constantly on uh, uh, when we're in meetings and stuff because it's in my office, so. <laughs> All right, so what does Modus Create? Uh, Modus Create, the company I work for, is a consulting firm that helps companies transform for success in the digital future. Um, we work with clients uh, to affect transformational change um, through collaboration, engagement, uh, model that focuses on strategy, product design and build, user experience, company culture, and process change to accelerate the response to digital disruption. Uh, we believe Atlassian is the best tool set for digital, tra digital transformation. Our expert teams, Modus, uh, can create a customized workflow with dev tool integration, audit and improve a problem project, train your team and best practices and more. Uh, we're also an official partner with Atlassian, AWS, Cloudflare, GitHub, uh, Envision, Ionic Framework, Vue.js, um, and so it creates a unique ecosystem for customer success. So, uh, can I see a hand, uh, show of hands? How many of you are currently using Jira Server? So there's one, three that I see. 
All right. Four how many younger. are you for? Okay. How many are you as using your data center? One, two, okay. Cindy, you already raised your hand. <laughs> All right. And then um, how about Jira Cloud? Is anybody currently in the cloud? What? See, that's the nice thing. You get to be many different things, Tanya and Cindy. Um, how many of you don't know? One person in chat saying that they're on cloud. Oh, okay. Thank you. I don't have that. Thank you. I didn't realize that it was even there. <clears throat> All right. Uh, does anybody, does anybody not know what, the, which, uh, per, uh, type they're in or their cloud or DC or server? All right. Well, are any of you planning to to uh, do a cloud migration anytime soon? I see Thomas. Billy, you are? All right, tell us about it. Uh, it's gonna be easy. What we're gonna do. <laughs> Did he go on mute on well, purpose? Well played, I well think played. So. Okay. <laughs> Cute. Secret so. To uh, anybody else planning on moving to uh, migration or to cloud soon? Sorry. I don't think we have a choice within three years. Okay. Yeah, we are here at FINRA. Uh, we're doing a, a data center migration first or license switch over. And then uh, most of our stuff is in AWS today. Uh, but okay. the intent in 2022 is to move to cloud. But we've got, we've got a lot of Atlassian products. So it's going to be a big project. Okay. And so, so you're already on server, but you're moving to DC and then you're going to move to cloud. Is that what you said? We've got several instances uh, for several different discrete businesses. So we have some that we just turned up. So we just put them on data center immediately, but we're in the process of moving our server licenses over to data center. I mean, as we speak. Sure. Sure. Cool. Awesome. So uh, that brings me to why we're here today. Um, so <clears throat> as most of you are likely aware, uh, Jira server is going away. Uh, with this in mind, many have many people have questions regarding the transition to their enterprise migration um, to Jira Cloud. So you're not alone in your journey to cloud. Many companies are struggling with this transition. It's it's a it's a difficult thing, and it's a very it can be very technical, especially for instance Tom's instance where it's coming from multiple uh, multiple merge merges across the uh, site. That makes it a lot more difficult. Um, so you know, here, hopefully we can, we can work through this and help you learn a few things along the way. So what you will learn today is uh, we're going to assess if uh, Jira Cloud fits your organizational needs. Um, that includes, includes qualification, assessing it, and then planning it. And then we also want to understand the server to cloud process and all the while sidestepping the pitfalls, dangers and risks. Uh, first thing we need to discuss is really the viability of your organization to move to the cloud. So um, migrating to the cloud has many advantages, uh, including zero infrastructure, zero server maintenance, um, automatic updates and easily scalable. Um, you know, you don't even need to do anything. You just update your license and it's done. Um, and those are just a few of the really um, great things about cloud. But it is important to keep the, the following in mind when deciding if a cloud migration is an option for your organization. So <clears throat> the difference between Jira and, uh, cloud and Jira server or data center, um, they're actually literally completely different products. They have a different code base. Uh, they have a different look and feel and actually different functionality as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Jira apps, you need to look at your Jira apps. Many may not be uh, be able to be migrated to the cloud instance. So because the code base is different from server to cloud, um, Jira app developers have to create two different products. Um, it's cumbersome and difficult. And especially since the code base of the cloud continually is updated, um, it's hard to keep up. As well, there are API limitations. <clears throat> cloud doesn't allow as much API access that's, that server allows, um, which can affect both your the apps, as I said, stated above, and also the ability to integrate with other um, tools that in your, uh, your enterprise solution. 
there's also technical limitations of an organization. So a lot of uh, most app migrations require a lot of technical know-how. Um, so you might be able to move your, your JIRA instance um, quite easily, I guess I'll put in quotes. Um, and, <clears throat> but the problem is, is you can't get your, your data from your, um, from your app. So it's just, it's a, it's a very technical based, um, uh, requires a lot of technical knowledge. Um, customizations, specifically regarding workflows. So some of these may not work in the same, the same in the cloud and will need to be manually modified once in the cloud. There are specific things, uh, triggers and um, those types of things that need to be manually put in after you've moved to the cloud. Compliance is also a big deal. So as of today, the JIRA cloud specifically prohibits uh, sensitive personal information. So that includes PCI or HIPAA data, all of that stuff. It's, it's so <clears throat> if you are putting that in your JIRA instance currently in your server or data center, you're not, it's not really eligible for the cloud instance. Um, it's in size too. So if you have a very large instance with more than 10,000 users, uh, unfortunately cloud won't be an option as of right now. <clears throat> I'm sure they'll be opening it up, but for right now they are only allowing up to 10,000. All right, so that was a whole bunch of information. Are there any questions so far? No, nothing in the chat? Okay, all right. So <clears throat> let's assume that all these questions haven't uh, dissuaded you <laughs> and you've, you've, you've not left the room because you're, you're okay, clearly cloud isn't for me. Um, and you're able to work through the, all of those issues or make, make sure that they're, they're not gonna be an issue when you move. Um, and everything in your JIRA instance will fit nicely in JIRA cloud. So next it's time to really delve into the appropriate steps for successful migration. So generally we're looking at five steps to a production migration to cloud. So the first one is really the assessment of, you, of your current instance. Um, you wanna look at the difference between pricing from server to cloud. They are priced differently. So you need to understand the pricing before moving to cloud. Otherwise you'll have a big surprise every month um, uh, or year, whichever you're paying for. Um, and also there's different levels in the cloud. There's standard, premium and enterprise and they each have a different SLAs and they also have different uptime guarantees. So it's important to understand the differences. They have price differences um, for each of those levels. Um, so it's important to understand that. Um, security, obviously you need to make sure that you're, you identify your organization's security requirements and validate that JIRA Cloud meets those. The available apps within the cloud. <clears throat> So let's take a look at your, your list of apps that you currently have in your JIRA server. Um, and you need to validate that they are actually available in the cloud, that they can, the data can be actually migrated to the cloud. And if there are any differences in the cloud app versus server app, there very often are functional differences uh, between the two. Um, I'll be spending more time on app validation a little bit later here. Uh, the next uh, step is to plan. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, you want to start your you want to start your licensing discussions with Atlassian or a partner um, to begin um, understanding what you need for licenses. Um, it's good to look into the FAQs and start a planning guide to review the migration um, uh, idiosyncrasies that your instance may present. So it's often if you're reading through those frequently asked questions and planning guides and you don't see something that's that your instance is doing you probably is a unique situation. So you'll, you'll need to look further or, or contact a partner to help you with that. Um, make sure to sign up for your free cloud migration license. So um, you get a free cloud migration license when you're, you're merging to the cloud. Uh, they they um, give it to you for a certain amount of time and I, I'm not a licensing specialist, but um, they, they'll give it to you for quite a while so you can test it out and migrate you know, a couple times if you need to, to, to really get the feel for it and make sure you know what you're doing. Um, also, you need to decide, decide on the, the migration method. Oh, uh, Tanya said it's up to the length of your current on-prem license. Thank you, thanks, Tanya. I thought that's what it was, but I didn't wanna misstate it. Um, 
so let's see sorry um yeah so the migration method so right really what i'm talking about here is the the jira cloud migration assistant utilizing that to be able to move um, your current data into the cloud um, there are other methods um, so you do need to decide if that's the method you're going to use or if you're going to you're going to go a different route if you're going to go a different route again it'll become a lot more technical um, and really more difficult um, before they came out with that migration tool it was a real real mess <clears throat> The next uh, step is to prepare. So you wanna clean up the instance that will be migrated. You wanna make sure that you have a somewhat clean instance. Um, I know that's not always easy, but it is something that is recommended. Yeah, Billy, go ahead. Hey, free cloud migration license. That, yeah. Does that give you extra time? Like yeah. does it give you, all right. So if uh, my license ended in two weeks and I needed to hurry up and do it, would that give me like two more weeks or? So if you, so as Tanya was, I was saying, I wasn't hundred percent sure, but it looks like what Tanya said is the length of your current on-prem license. So if you've paid through, you know, if your license comes up in two year in two, two weeks, um, you'll have it for two weeks, but I mean, you could probably renew and then you would have it again for the next year. I don't know exactly. Exactly. How that works. Yeah, okay. so that's, yeah. that's what we're recommending to folks. So if you have a license renewal that's coming up in a couple of weeks, for example, we would advise that you wait until you do that renewal and then start your cloud migration trial nearly immediately within a few days. So then if you've, ex if you've got a year on your current data center or server licenses, you would have that full year to complete your cloud migration. They're also doing some dual license promos so you can get all kinds of stuff just free or discounted to, to move to the cloud. Um, that's not to say, though, that the apps will grant you free access for the same amount of time. So you have to reach out independently um, to each of those app developers to see if they will grant that to you. Yeah, so. only some vendors have opted into that yeah. for uh, for the cloud, but for the base products, at least you're saving a lot of money. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Tanya. <clears throat> Um, so, uh, as I was saying, you want a clean instance, um, if you're going to have this pristine, uh, cloud instance and you don't want to push a bunch of garbage in there because, um, it, that's not going to be what you want to want to hit now that you're get, yeah, at this brand new, uh, system that you can work through. Um, you want to review the anonymous access setting. So with, uh, the setting differs in cloud and it actually can expose all of your organization's Jira data to anyone on the internet. Um, they've done a better job in the last six months or so to make sure that you're aware of that as you're migrating but um, before that you really didn't know and um, you had to if you if you didn't know it you could just upload it and then it's available to anyone on the internet um, so there might be a reason for doing this but you definitely want to make sure it's planned not accidental so um, you want to ensure the cloud site has the correct user tier for your instance and you also want to validate your time frame and then alert, <clears throat> alert at last and let them know when you're when you're planning on moving. Any questions? I have more here, but on this slide, but just want to make sure it is a lot of information. So, okay. The next step is to test. So you run your test migration. Um, you install your apps. You migrate the data from those apps if required or if, if possible, um, you do a UAT, just conduct user acceptance testing, and then you solidify your prod timeline. You identify the prod migration timeframe and then notify Atlassian through, again, through your move ticket that you've created. And if everything looks good, then you're ready to, to actually migrate to prod. So you run your prod migration <clears throat> and redirect users to a new cloud site um, so that they don't start using that. Uh, update your apps and start testing and make sure everything's good. Once it's good, then you're good to go and you can turn your JIRA server to read only or turn it off if you want to, whatever you're planning on doing with it. <laughs> so uh, any questions for that? It's a high level overview of the steps. Okay. So, um, you know, JIRA, Cloud Migration Assistant has made 
migrations to the cloud much, much easier. Um, but I wanted to be sure to point out the things that it can't do, that it can cannot do. So the first thing to note is it doesn't fix broken prop processes. So if you have too many statuses or transitions or approvals or custom fields, moving to the cloud will not fix your problem. That's a process issue, not a tool issue. So um, I always feel like I have to put that out there just because it is. <laughs> some people think that the tool will fix everything and uh, it won't. So um, it also is important to note um, the technical side of this. The rest of these are, are actually technical things that don't come across when you use this. So <clears throat> some project setup doesn't come across specifically uh, custom fields, um, custom field language translations, and some workflow functions, and project avatars don't come across. So when you move your migrate your entire system or entire uh, instance to um, the cloud, you will not your project avatars will just be back to back to default. Um, I have a I have a list of the others if anybody wants to know what all of those pieces are. Um, because it is a, there are some custom fields on there that you might be a little bit surprised by. So I cannot, uh, let's see. And I, <clears throat> Jira service management projects. So those can't be moved with the migration assistant. So if you're moving, if you have a JSM, uh, a JSM that you're trying to move, unfortunately this one process won't, won't be there for you. Um, global entities for Jira. That is uh, global permissions, general configuration like um, time zones, languages, uh, your dashboards, those are, will not move. Um, cross project boards. So if you have multiple projects that are assigned to a single board, those will not move. Um, the reason is in cloud projects are assigned, or boards are assigned to a single project. You can have the information from more than one project in that but you can, it has to be assigned to a single project. <clears throat> Filters on boards that are not migrated won't come up as well, and some confluence links won't come across. Hey Abe, that sounds like a lot of stuff that's not gonna come over using the migration assistant. It is. is. Is there another option for Jira to you know move your stuff over? Um, well, so there is manual processes that you can do um, <clears throat> a lot of so really the, the like the global stuff is not that not that big of a deal generally just because um, you know your permissions that you have are you usually set that stuff up within the cloud anyways. Um, dashboards, you know it's a look, different look and feel. Um, so it's and it's pretty easy to set up a dashboard. So a lot of these things you can do manually. Um, there's not a lot of catch up that has to be done. Um, but as far as like the project setup ones that that are, are not coming across, there are quite a few things that are really important um, that you can't get. Basically, you just can't get the data <clears throat> utilizing this migration tool. But there I'm are sure, other ways you could migrate that you could gap, you know, get some of this data. So there are it, uh, there's right? an XML. Uh, you can you can do it by um, uh, do it export in XML and um, you can get some of the data that way. But again, so you will gain some things doing it that way, but then you'll lose some of the things that this tool is bringing across. So the workflows and such, you won't get that on the XML. You won't, you'll, you'll get workflows, but they won't be nearly to the complexity that they are currently in your server with an XML export and import. Um, there are tools that you can utilize as well to do this migration, but this is the, the best tool that I to use, honestly. I've used all the other tools. I've used the Botron tool. Um, I've used the, I think there's Adaptivist has a tool um, and they're all very cumbersome, very difficult, very technically driven and very difficult to use. Whereas this is, is quite straightforward and it actually walks you through the process. Um, it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> but it is by far the easiest and moves the most stuff. So it's just, this is really just to let you know that these things aren't coming across. It's not a perfect process, but as long as you're aware, then you can kind of rectify the situation once you're in cloud. Does that answer your question, Chris? Yep. Okay, great. <clears throat> All right.
right? So some users and groups. So if you utilize Jira service management, again, um, only the agents are migrated. So if you have a bunch of customers that are in, in your uh, Jira service management, you, those customers don't come across. Um, as well, users and groups from inactive directories. So if you actually want those users to come across, you have to turn that, you have to activate that directory, you have to turn it back on. Otherwise it won't bring them across. Excuse me, I just gotta take a drink. <coughs> App data, I, I do hammer this home. Uh, this is re really important because people, don't always understand that the app data is a big deal. Um, so app data is not included in the backup when migrating from Jira server to cloud. So as stated in the previous slide, some apps do have the capability to export and import their data, but you'll need to check, you know, with the app developer and their documentation to confirm it's possible. Um, which gets, if you have a lot of, a lot of apps, it becomes pretty cumbersome. User profiles. <clears throat> this one is uh, surprising to some people. So basically, if you have a user avatar, a personal avatar, that doesn't come across. Um, they'll need to update their own avatar again. Passwords. So unless you've set up a SSO, a single sign-on, um, your users will have to reset their passwords after migrating. And then the other piece that doesn't come across are uh, customized time zone by profile. So they'll have to reset up their, their time zone in their profile. And the last thing to highlight really are archived issues. <clears throat> they do not migrate. So if you need those migrated, they'll have to be removed from the archived status. So it's a big list. Um, it seems like a lot of stuff, but functionally it's not a lot of stuff. There are some big things that definitely need to uh, be addressed. Uh, specifically around workflows. Um, there are functions that don't come across. So if you're unaware of a specific function within a workflow and that doesn't come across, you now have issues where somebody pulls one of your statuses or moves one of your uh, issues into a status and now you can't get it out because the function is broken. So um, so it's it, you have to actually go through your, all your workflows and make sure you understand them and, and how they all work. And then when you move to the cloud, you need to put it back in, basically. Okay, any questions? Okay. <clears throat> uh, so now that we know what Jira Cloud Migration Assistant can't do, let's see what it can do. So what can be migrated? Um, Jira software project data. Uh, that includes your rankings, that includes epics, your epic links, the names, uh, issue ranks, uh, estimates, sprints, environments, components, all of those pieces, all of the things that really matter a lot. So um, that's good. Um, and uh, versions, all of that, boards connected to only one project, those will all be migrated. Um, <clears throat> The next thing is Jira core project data. So that includes, you know, the name, keys, project types, uh, issue type schemes, the, the uh, workflows, all of those pieces, they, they come uh, right along with Jira core. Uh, next is issue data. So you get your summary, description, issue types, um, you know, dates, labels, um, check boxes. Uh, attachments, comments, comments with security, story points, all of those things. Time spent, if, you, if you're keeping track of that. Uh, work logs, um, uh, issue history. I'm, I'm just trying to think of all the other things that there are. Basically everything that you see in an issue comes across. So it, it'll be as if it is in the same system. It just looks a little bit different in the cloud. Uh, Jira software boards. <clears throat> So they need to be connected to projects selected in the migration, obviously. And they also have to be only linked to that one project. Uh, if they're linked to more than one, they won't migrate. But that includes your boards, names, administrators, filters and permissions, locations, card colors, 
permission, sprint permissions, swim lanes, all that stuff. So pretty much everything comes across really nicely with the software boards, as long as it is assigned to one project. Uh, the way to get around that is go through your projects and see if any of your boards have more than one project in them. If they do, you can actually switch that off right before you move to migrate and then um, it'll just be assigned to that one project and then you can put put the um, correct filter back in once you get it to the cloud so that's it is a workaround but sometimes you have to do that so all right users and groups from active directories so jira core and jira software users as well as jira service management agents um, deleted users from server are migrated, but they're migrated as former user. So um, it's it's kind of funky because it can be 400 different people and they all have former users set up. So, but that's how they handle it. <coughs> um, all groups and active directories and users managed by external directories as well. And the last thing is archived projects. So you can really customize your migration uh, to your specific needs. There's a lot of different different pieces you can put together. Um, it allows you to move an entire instance in a single migration, or you can you, you can move them project by project. Um, if you are moving specific projects, you can choose to only move the required users and groups for those projects, uh, or you can choose to send all users and groups at, at one time. Um, and that. It, Either way, it doesn't really matter uh, other than the user tier that you have on the on the cloud side. So let's look, take a look at how to verify uh, AppCap compatibility in the cloud or for the cloud. <clears throat> so during your assess, prepare, plan stages of your migration, you have to look at your marketplace apps. So one of the first things you need to do is identify which ones are business critical. Uh, the stakeholders, they have to decide if it's a business critical app. Um, that is a, that its apps functionality is critical to have in the cloud. If that's a yes, then you move on. Uh, next, you need to make sure it's available in the cloud. If it's not available in the cloud, it doesn't really matter if it's business critical because you're not going to get it. <laughs> um, so uh, that that is a big deal. Um, and there are a lot of apps that you would think we're there and, and they're not. So um, it's a it's a big lift really for, especially for fault, smaller organizations that write apps to be able to do it in two different code bases. So um, <clears throat> the next question you need, need to really look at is, does this app require a data migration to the cloud separate from the JIRA migration? So is this data held within issues? If it's held within issues, it would go with it. Um, if because it would create its own custom fields, those types of things, and that would move right along with Jira. But if there's extraneous data uh, scripts and that type of thing, does are you able to grab that and actually move it to the cloud? Is there a path for you to be able to follow? Um, <coughs> excuse me. The number of users. So generally, the entire user base in the instance doesn't utilize an app. So some apps allow you to be able to pare them down. Uh, the number of users so you can save your, yourself money it's a shared license um, so that's just a question to ask to make sure that you know you're you're not paying for 400 users when you really only need to pay for 10. Uh, feature differences so if it's business critical it's available in the cloud and there's a migration path um, we need to also look at the marketplace vendors documentation describing the features differences from server to cloud. Again, it's, they are two different products and therefore don't have the same um, access, the API access that, it's, that it needs. So they have to do things differently when they write those um, cloud apps. So, and there can be substantial differences in the features. So it's important to make sure that what you're looking for is still gonna do what it needs to do. Uh, I already mentioned cloud migration path. I guess I included that as data migration required, but um, so yeah, you just need to make sure there's a migration path that, that the, the app developer has, has shown you the way basically. Um, so if it's business critical, it's not available in the cloud or the features are so different that you can't, that it doesn't, it's not technically the same product. 
are there cloud alternatives? So, um, you know, are, are there things that will be able to satisfy this business need in another way? Um, so there are definitely different cloud things. There are different different cloud apps that are available, and it's just worth looking around to see if it's really business critical. You know, it's worth checking into. So, and the last thing to keep an eye on is price. Uh, again, server and cloud pricing is different, um, and it, it's important to take note of that before just turning it all on and saying "bill me" at the end of the month. So. Uh, yeah, so it can be a daunting task, uh, especially if you have a lot of marketplace apps. Um, are there any questions specifically regarding apps or you know, questions you need to ask or, or, you know, how to find out if it's business critical or? <laughs> okay, sounds good. I, I guess if you just turn off the app or disable it in your server, and then depending on who notifies you, you could yep. uh, learn that real quick. Exactly who's... Right. That is exactly that's right. That's awesome. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is who's actually administrator's approach to this the problem. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, and you know that is a it's a mistake that a lot of administrators make is they just turn it on so that people can go in and turn on their own apps when they want, and then they go into the app area and realize. Oh, okay, now I have 400 apps and I don't know who uses them or if anybody uses them, they're all signed up for demo purposes and you know expired demos and, and it's just a cluster. So it's good, to, uh, it's good to not have that on for everybody to turn on and off, but also it's, it's good to um, you know, have less apps. It's just too many apps, so. Okay, so. Um, is this doing now? Sorry, I don't know why it's doing that. All right, so that's it. Um, you know, that's all of uh, that's all the time I have really for tonight. Um, I hope this presentation gave you some information that is helpful um, and kind of gives you insight into what it takes to successfully migrate to the cloud. Uh, there's a lot of questions that need to be asked. There's a lot of interesting. Uh, everybody's instances are different, so every every instance requires different questions but these are the basic questions that you really need to ask and then you can kind of delve into it a little further um, so yeah any other questions otherwise stick around and yeah we can have a QA or something like that so, so uh, all in all this should be able to handle it like Tuesday afternoon takes about an hour <laughs> easy I actually told someone that the other day they contacted me. I said, oh, you can do it yourself. You have like 10 users. You're good. They're like, no, no, I think I need a little help. I was like, well, if you insist, we'll help you, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's something um, you want to definitely plan out, you know, do a trial. I, you know, I think, I think uh, Abe mentioned it, but the migration team at Atlassian is really a great place to start to really see, you know, if you have any questions you want to try to get going yourself before reaching out to a partner like Lotus. Um, you know, submit a ticket to them. There's so much content on uh, Atlassian's site about assessing the cloud, getting ready, checking it out. Um, I know the announcement that they, you know, gave earlier this year with the pricing changes and, you know, deprecating server was a lot uh, for, you know, to take in, understand what it means, um, you know, know what you have to do in terms of going to data center or, or cloud or whatnot. So, um, we did do our own little article, um, just kind of incorporating what it kind of meant to us instead of worrying about, you know, every single detail of the announcement. So I'll put that link in the, in the chat if anyone, anyone wants to check that out. Um, just, you know, it's a really good article. Josh uh, wrote it for us and it really just kind of goes through, should I go data center? Should I go cloud? When do I have to do this? What are my options? Um, so really kind of digesting the, the larger announcement that they gave. Um, Abe, thank you so much. This was really informative. Yeah, yeah I'm just happy, happy to be here. <clears throat> it was, uh, was good. I'm glad you all uh, worked out all right. Nobody flew the coop, I don't think, while we were doing it. So that's good. <laughs> And uh, yeah, Billy, I will provide you with a uh, copy of the slide deck. Um, so if anybody, I, I see Jennifer had asked for it, so.
I am in the chat. Here is the link to our community page. And actually, Abe, when you're available, you can put the slides right there. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's Excellent. how it's built. Excellent. You have the power. <laughs> uh, Billy, uh, you said that to me. So, uh, it's in it to everyone. I did have a quick question with regard to uh, some of the sensitivities of certain data in uh, cloud applications, being that, that FINRA is in the, you know, the regulatory business. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts there. Um, of course, we deal with that across the board because we've got a mixture of on-prem, um, AWS, Azure, and then some cloud apps as well. So I didn't know if you had some thoughts there. Sure. Yeah, so um, one of the, uh, I guess, one of the first questions I would have is, are you actually putting sensitive data into JIRA? Very often it's not sensitive data, very often it's technical information. Um, you know, it might have somebody's name in there, but it's usually somebody who works for you. <laughs> um, so um, that would be my first question to really see if that's um, um, a vi viable issue. Yeah, you know, and we do we deal with we have systems that are considered you know systems of record mm -hmm. um, and those by definition contain sensitive information and um, through policy those are the only systems that are supposed to have that sensitive information but as you can imagine i make mistakes all day long i'm putting stuff in jira and it's possible that some of that is is sensitive sure. so um just questions that I know that, you know, our, our team is going to be asking and socializing and things of that nature. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And unfortunately, I don't think there's any way that you can just like have a auto masking or anything like that. You know, like I yeah. know some systems you can, you can uh, implement that like Salesforce uh, has, has that type of capability, but. Uh, well, you mentioned HIPAA compliance. Is that something that Atlassian basically says, Hey, if you've got HIPAA information, we won't accept you as a cloud cut. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Basically, yeah. So if, if you have data that if you're using it to house that data, if it's accidentally in there, I don't think they're going to say much. I don't think they actively go through people's business. But, um, you know, if if you if that's the purpose of your business and that's the purpose of JIRA is to house that information, I would say, yeah, they're not going to let you have it. So, yeah, and we're dealing with um, with Atlassian directly. We've actually got biweekly calls with them uh, as we okay. begin to ramp up this cloud migration. Um, sure. Actually, they're focused more on data center at this point, but um, yep. Yep. yeah, I did, I wasn't aware of that, so that's good to know. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. There's there's a lot of little idiosyncrasies there. It's hard to work out unless you've done this for a long time. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah uh, how is your wanna... how is your migration going, Tom? Uh, we're, we've not started yet. Not so, started. I mean, okay. in terms of data center, like I mentioned, we've got some uh, what we call our internal customers that we just bring up directly on data center. We've got other server licenses that we're in the process of moving over. Um, I'm fairly new to FINRA. I've been in the consulting space for a number of years, been using Alassian tools. So I'm well aware. And as I look at the instance at FINRA or the instances at FINRA, I mean, it's just a mess. We've got lots of plugins. We've got, you know, thousands of users. Yeah. Uh, we've got probably thousands of projects. And so just the, the tedium of going through and reconciling everything is, is it's gonna, it's daunting. So, it yeah, and it, we may come to the realization that it's just not feasible. We may move, you know, portions and groups to cloud and then keep, you know, some groups on data center. So we'll just have to see. Okay. Good. And Tom, well, I, I, yeah. oh. I dropped it in chat just so that, you know, uh, Modus Create actually has a long history with FINRA. One of our co-founders used to work there. So a lot of contacts probably in common if you need help. That's that's good to know. And by the way, you're in Dallas. I'm in Fort Worth, so we're not far from one another. Oh. <laughs> I'm actually in Springtown, so I'm like half an hour from you. Okay. Okay. I know where that is. <laughs> Nobody, half the people don't know Fort Worth, so I just say Dallas to make it easy. <laughs> Well, to, to put it plainly, I have uh, longhorn cattle in my backyard or just beyond my backyard. So that's typical Fort Worth. Wow. Thanks. Josh, did you have something? Yeah, I was just going to add that, um, yeah, so the security is always a huge concern for cloud, right? And it's always been for years. And like for me personally, like I, I worked at a large company before the, and um, it, the past two years ago, um, the cloud was a non was a non-starter yep. for totally. most organizations because of security. Yep. However, 
right? So like last year, I think it was, sorry, 2019 summit. <laughs> um, last year kind of blew by, right? <laughs> um, they last year really kind of, if you go back and watch announcement, like they, all of their talk was about cloud. They came out with, they, they had recently announced cloud premium. Now, now they're announcing cloud enterprise, which is amazing, like unlimited scope, unlimited, unlimited everything basically for enterprise. But um, they're also uh, evolving security, right? So they're, they've, they're starting to uh, introduce features like uh, IP allow listing, like essentially whitelisting IP addresses. So you can essentially treat it like a data center of security. Like, so you have to be on a VPN or if coming from a physical location to access the site, right? So you, you can actually funnel through IP control access to IP addresses ranges. Um, and there's things like that. There's also a cloud um, map, like a features map they have put out because for things exactly like security and data residency and things that are concerns for a large company with, with uh, sensitive information. So this is definitely a, a high concern. So which is why I think um, they allowed three years before ending some of these services because um, yeah, these features are ongoing, but what's 100% clear, what's, what's uh, from the past two years is Atlassian is going cloud. That's where their investments are. Yeah, it's all, that's it's all the future is. All their horses are in that cart. I, I would disagree slightly. Many of their horses are in that cart because we still have a lot sure. of clients on data center that are, and, and we're getting reassured by Atlassian that data center is not going anywhere. They recognize a huge percentage of their user base can't move to cloud. I apologize. Yeah. I didn't mean to say they're discontinuing. They're definitely going to right. uh, continue. Yeah, to data continue. center will still be there, just server. Sure. Yeah. yeah, this is for obvious so Josh, reason. what you're saying makes complete sense. You see a compass heading, you see a direction, you see the industry moving in that direction. It could be that, you know, that's, 10 years down the road, but just something to yeah. be cognizant of. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a long time. Definitely. But I think, I think the, the, the answer of the, you know, where there's putting a lot of investment there is that cloud is kind of like the cool fun place to be. Right. Because that's where they're putting the, like all the new features that actually, you know, improve your user experience um, or improve the experience of your users. Most of those we're seeing pop up in cloud. Of course, they're adding some to data center, right? But a lot of the stuff that they've done in data center over the last year or two has been to support, you know, administering data center at scale, right? Mm -hmm. So like archiving individual issues, archiving projects, um, you know, they added the support for data center single node um, so that you could move a single, um, you could move a server license product to data center without having to do all of the configuration of data center, right? Um, now that we all look back on that, right? Shocker that they did that, you know, maybe what a year ago, six months ago. And then all of a sudden now they said, oh, server isn't available anymore, or it's not gonna be available, you know, over the next three year time frame." So that was obviously in preparation for this so that they could make it very easy for people who wanted to go to data center versus cloud to make those options, but they are giving a lot of incentives for either license platform. Uh, cloud pricing is is high, you know it is, but obviously you're not paying for the infrastructure and you're not paying for as much administration than you know like you had to before. So they definitely have those those ROI like calculators out there to help make the case for the prices, um, and they have some some good pricing to help get you through the first few years. But after that, it is going to go up up to that you know that full list price. So eventually you'll be paying that higher cost. But the but, differentiator yeah. for cloud really is anyone can do it. Yeah. Like if you've got 10 or fewer users, it's free. You can go on there, you can set it up. You, it, as long as you have a little bit of ingenuity and education on how Jira or Confluence works, it, it's completely straightforward. So that's completely different than a data center instance where you have to have someone technical, you have to have the infrastructure and you have to have ongoing support and maintenance. Otherwise it's just going to be a disaster. It's absolutely true. And, and something that I'm excited about cloud that nobody's talking about right now because it's just fledgling is Alassian Forge. If you're not familiar, Alassian Forge is a whole development platform that Alassian announced in 2019. It's just still in beta. It's incredibly exciting though. So like all these developers, like Tanya was talking about maintaining two code bases, Atlassian Forge is a whole environment, a whole platform that developers can uh, develop for cloud 
and Atlassian hosts your applications for free, by the way. And, and so it lives inside of their cloud, right? So there's no, that eliminates what, like 90% of your security concerns with your apps because it lives inside of the same ecosystem. There's no, there's no back and forth outside external. It's inside of the lasting security. Um, not only that, but it's making, they're making it a whole new, new development platform and it's going to make development for these apps a lot easier. So I would expect the marketplace to look a lot different in the next two years. Um, and, because that's been a concern as well for, for cloud, right? And the main concern is like, as, as a likes to hammer home, is your apps, right? But in the next two years, is that the Atlassian is sowing seeds to change that narrative. Okay, I'm, I'm stepping in because we're after six and the conversation is still going. Normally, we'd be like, meet you guys in the bar downstairs, but we don't have a bar downstairs. Um, so this is where that Atlassian community um, comes in. We can keep that conversation going. I'll post the link again um, for everyone. And feel free to, I've already added that forge in there. Um, I put the picture in there too. Put a link up in the, wherever you wanna find that link. Um, and as soon as I can get the YouTube video up, I'll put the link in there. Uh, Abe, if you can get the slides in there, boom, we're, we're, uploading we're collaborating. Right, uploading right now. Um, hashtag do it live. Uh, <laughs> thanks again, Abe, uh, for presenting. This is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, no Chris, thanks so much for picking up the phone when I called to say, hey, I could really use some help here. Um, as always, if you guys know anyone who can or would like to present, just hand them my information. You don't have to tell them where I got it from or I won't tell them where I got it in from. And I'll just try and casually, like try, you know, hopefully let them talk at our upcoming events. And if, if y'all have topics that you're interested in for the future too, put those on the community page. That'll be helpful for Billy to, to get some really relevant topics for y'all. Great plug, thanks, thanks Chris. Thanks, everybody. Great to yeah, see thanks you. Thanks a lot, guys. Great to yeah, thanks for questions. Appreciate it. Thanks, Abe. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye.